Report. I'm Lena Bond. This is the Michigan Football Insider, James Yoder. We have some breaking news coming out of Ann Armor or Ann Arbor. Excuse me. Former five-star quarterback Shea Patterson has officially announced his decision to transfer to Michigan. Let's go ahead and pull up his tweet, James. What can you tell me about this? Well, I thought it was going to happen yesterday, as I reported in my Michigan Football Rumors Roundup this morning. Uh, it sounded like everything was a go to commit yesterday and indicate to you know Michigan that he'll be in school in just three weeks later. That's how crazy this is going to wow. turn around. He'll be enrolling in Michigan, be on campus in three and a half, four weeks from now, and you know he will be able to compete in spring practice. But he told the Michigan coaching staff as he left yesterday, he was with his parents that he wanted to talk to his brother, who has been his like default QB coach since he was about 10 years old, his older brother, uh, who was on the Ole Miss staff in one of these support specialist roles. Uh, and then he's got two, he's got another brother and then two sisters actually. He wanted to take time to call the family, let them know. Uh, it sounded like his entire family was behind him going to Michigan given their, uh, you know, their grandfather's affinity for that part of the world mm -hmm. and him playing for the Pistons. And it sounds like he was able to get those calls out this morning and go ahead and, uh, and make this decision. Now what this signals to me, as I put in my article this morning, is that he is free and clear to enroll at Michigan as a student. Now, that doesn't mean that he's going to uh, get the eligibility that's still being questioned out there, whether or not he can play in 2018, Lena, which I think is vital to this being a mm -hmm. successful transition and not kind of interfering with the Michigan long-term quarterback plans with Brandon Peters and then uh, Dylan McCaffrey. But it means that, you know, Jim Harbaugh told two other players, Deontay Anderson, which we know for sure, and then we've rumored, and I don't know this one for sure, uh, Van Jefferson, that, hey, don't announce anything officially in public until the academic uh, side of the house comes back and says right. you're clear to enroll as a student. Uh, so for me, the signal is that Shea Patterson got that uh, got that go ahead, his transfer, his grades, uh, you know, checked out, and he'll be on Michigan's campus in just a few weeks. Lena, another interesting rumor that I, I think I didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable enough to report it, but I think it turns out it's probably going to be true. Is a rumor was hitting the internet on Friday night, Saturday morning, that he had given his uh, his landlord down there in Oxford, Mississippi a move out letter before he took <laughs> off to Ann Arbor on Friday. No joke, this is going that out is there. That is why you're the Michigan <laughs> so football I mean, insider. Is I couldn't confirm it with uh, with Coach Harbaugh himself, but uh, but I, I can say that that sounds like it was probably true because you know you got to take care. You got to you know you know uh, dot the eyes, cross, cross the, the T's, as we said. So uh, very exciting. I think this is a pivotal moment in Jim Harbaugh's tenure as Michigan's coach, and there's a lot more to talk about with it. But uh, in general, breaking news. This is what we've been talking about. We were one of the first people. I think we were the first people on Facebook Live for sure. To talk about the first video uh, show to talk about this possibility of being a transfer when we rumored three weeks ago that he was likely going to go to Michigan for the Ohio State game as a guest. That got out there. Maybe we shouldn't have broke that news. He didn't make that trip, but ultimately made it up to Ann Arbor, gave his commitment to Michigan, uh, you know, calling Coach Harbaugh and the rest of the staff just earlier this morning after he talked to his family. Now, Shea Patterson, of course, as we mentioned, former five-star quarterback. He was the number one quarterback coming out of his class as the number three player. This season alone, he scored 17 touchdowns, passed for nearly 2,500 yards, completing almost 65% of his passes. But none of this really matters, James, unless he's able to play. So I want to talk more about what you know about his eligibility and the likelihood that he steps on the field next season. Uh, yeah, so what I have been told, and this is where it gets just kind of really interesting, really uh, – just you're kind of you know living in the, the shadows. No one really knows for sure how accurate this stuff is, but we know for sure is that there's an attorney down there called named Thomas Mars. He represented Ole Miss coach Houston Nutt. In, it represents in his litigation against Ole Miss, against the school, uh, a, a, a court case that ultimately led to Hugh Freeze getting fired because they uncovered documents, mm -hmm. uh, phone records, showed Hugh Freeze made phone calls he shouldn't have made <laughs> to certain services <laughs> that uh, that I guess men uh, who are Bible thumping guys like Hugh Freeze was uh, make, but uh, probably shouldn't. And Thomas Mars is now definitely representing uh, Deontay Anderson, the safety who is likely going to transfer to Michigan as well, and other players. So we don't know the names of those other players. Shea Patterson is likely to get into that, uh, that fold, is representing them in just their discussions with Ole Miss, with the NCA, and then with the University of Michigan. And so with Ole Miss, this, this lawyer actually kind of pushed to like, hey, you guys don't want to restrict where my guys can go. It was originally against, you couldn't restrict to future uh, opponents mm -hmm. or any SEC school. That's already been taken away. So you know Thomas Mars is already doing his thing as a lawyer. And now he's communicating kind of on behalf of Michigan and the players. Michigan's not paying him by any means, but representing their interest to talk to the NCAA, 
to say, hey, these guys were misled during the recruiting process. The coaching staff that you fired in Hugh Freeze and, and some of his guys lied about their transgressions, lied about uh, what the potential sanctions were. Mm -hmm. And because of that, our guys committed to the school and played there under false circumstances. And because of that, you should let us, you know, approve an appeal to allow um, – uh, to allow Shea Patterson, Deontay Anderson, Van Jefferson, and as many as you know, several dozen other Ole Miss players to get instant eligibility to be able to play in 2018 for the University of Michigan. So with that, a uh, lot of stuff happening, and I think there's some more things we can go into. It was a wild weekend for Shea Patterson. It seemed like a real fun weekend. So he was spotted all over Ann Arbor doing a variety of things around the Michigan campus. So what can you tell us about his visit this weekend that really secured his transfer, James? So here's a picture of him in the game with, uh, with Deontay Anderson, but I think we want to start, I kind of want to recap the weekend kind of play by play. So we arrived at 7 o'clock uh, uh, on Friday night, and then there was a video of him in the big house on Saturday morning. It was actually taken from Deontay Anderson's Snapchat account. Uh, we were the kind of the only the only company that put it out there on Twitter, did the old uh, record this bad boy. And this is Shea Patterson. Unfortunately, we don't get to see him throw it here, but I, I think the the uh, the takeaway is he must have thrown it good because Jim Harbaugh wanted him in the big house there. So they got in there. Got some, uh, got some exposure. Now, funny enough, he wasn't even with the Michigan coaches there. This is just support staff and some other folks to help out with recruiting. Michigan was practicing while that was going on for their upcoming bowl game. So Patterson and the other, not just the Ole Miss guys, but all the recruits that were in town that weekend uh, went to the big house and were throwing around snowballs. And that's kind of you know pretty fun. A guy like Van Jefferson uh, and Anderson have spent most of their life in the South and never really been around snow too much. So this is a different experience for him. I think we can almost see the, the Amazon coat that he he ordered. He ordered, yeah. We, we, we broke that story that was uh, shipped to him from Amazon to his apartment. Now he's uh, moving out of. And then uh, we go to Saturday. We go back to the photo. Him and the recruits, they took in the UCLA Michigan basketball game. So this is a thrilling game later. Mm -hmm. Michigan had to come roaring back in the second half, tie the game up, and take it to overtime where they ultimately won. I was told it was a ruckus atmosphere, but what was most important, important of that is that the student section, which you kind of sit, seated, you know, caddy corner from, they were sitting on the baseline, the student section is kind of in the corner towards the end behind the Michigan bench, were chanting, we want Shea continuously throughout the entire game. We want Shea. So I think uh, that got He's him getting love. hyped, show the love. That's what you want when you're a recruit coming in town. Uh, hopefully Brandon Peters wasn't in that crowd taking in the game because he might've felt a little bit awkward at that time so uh, this is him was with with Jefferson with Peters and, uh, and and that's kind of what happened so they won the game uh, there was also some video of him and John O'Corn and Ann Arbor it was clearly a nightclub it was a you know it was not a house party it was a nightclub uh, Look to be having a little too much fun for being only 20 years old. That's fine. And so that got you, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the sense of, hey, you know, he's having fun. He's out in the town with these guys. Mm -hmm. And then the kicker for me was a photo that we broke on Saturday, a picture of Shea Patterson getting fitted by Michigan's equipment manager with the helmet. If you see that, that, that uh, on the right side of your screen, there's that, uh, was that a duck tattoo? That's Michigan's equipment manager. So you know this is a, uh, an authentic photo, Lena. And, uh, mm -hmm. and this is what happened. So after this meeting, he met with Harbaugh, Drevno, and some other coaches. Uh, he made it very clear that he was coming to Michigan. He said, I'm not going to put it out there until I'm able to talk to my brothers, talk to my sisters, let my family know. I don't want them to find out about it on the internet. And, uh, and with that, um, you know, Michigan has uh, is got the quarterback of not even the future, Lena. This is the quarterback of the present. I think it's very, very likely that Michigan is going to uh, land, um, uh, I'm sorry, he's going to have him eligible for uh, next year, and he is going to be the starting quarterback uh, of the football program starting September 1st on the road in South Bend. Talk about a, uh, a debut game for a quarterback like Shea Patterson. And you, know, you look at this 2018 season, Lena, there was really only two positions Michigan was kind of lacking, uh, you know, clarity mm -hmm. when it came to being a national championship contending program. We know how good the defense has been. We know that's national championship contending. It was the quarterback position really held them back from winning against Wisconsin and Ohio State in the last couple weeks of the season, and then also the tackle position. So this solves one of those problems. I still think there's opportunities with a couple of Ole Miss players, one much more likely than the other, of getting some of those transfers from Ole Miss starting uh, left tackle, right tackle, uh, but th this shores up the biggest you know, hole on this team. And you now, Lena, have a guy who threw six games last year, was leading the SEC in passing at over 330 yards a game. A guy, if you took his stats from his first six games uh, before he got hurt in his seventh game against LSU, 
and put them over an entire season, 4,500 yards passing, which would demolish the Michigan season record, oh, which yeah. is about 3,500 yards passing, right? He would have had 36 touchdowns. Now, he would have had about 15 interceptions, but I think you'll take that if you're getting a 2.5 to 1 TD to INT ratio. Uh, and he would have the third highest passer rating in the Big Ten. So across the board, uh, some phenomenal stats. He was a five-star recruit in that 2016 class. And once we get word that he is for sure eligible, it is hype train city in Ann Arbor, baby. You can't ask for a a better, uh, you know, a more of exciting thing to happen to the University of Michigan football program. And, uh, and I just can't wait to see him, you know, don the, the, the maize and blue and, and the winged helmet. That's what I was say. He looks good in that maize and blue. And last question I have for you, James. Does this make Michigan a national title contender? I think it's got to. If, if he is eligible, and you're also going to get, I think, Van Jefferson, Deontay Anderson. I think you've got at least two starters with Anderson and Patterson who are an upgrade from what you would have had coming back. And Patterson, I think, a big upgrade from what you had coming back. And then Van Jefferson, the guy who has proven it. He has been on the field. He has 100-plus catches in two years uh, at, at, or about around 100. I think it's 99 catches in two years at Ole Miss, which is much more than any wide receiver that Michigan is going to count on next year so I think you can kind of pencil him in if he's not a starter he's gonna be your you know your three wide and with Patterson and this is one thing we haven't talked about yet uh, Patterson was told by Michigan that their conventional offense of you know especially this year of you know under center two tight ends two wide receivers etc mm -hmm. that's not gonna be the offense they would run under him they put it a lot more into shotgun uh, a lot more three and four wide receiver sets, and I think it was enough to get his, uh, his commitment. So we will talk more about Shea Anderson on, I'm sorry, Shea, uh, <laughs> Shea Patterson and, and Deontay Anderson and Van Jefferson in a, in a future Michigan football report. We're going to be all over this story uh, in the coming days. Also, Lena, this bad boy is going to be in the Michigan football, pod, Michigan football report podcast for iTunes, the number one video podcast with all the highlights, all Harbaugh's press conferences all of our shows for itunes only you can just go to chatsports.com slash go blue or just check it out in the itunes store or the podcast uh, app just search michigan football report and that bad boy will hook you up anytime you're away from facebook live a must subscribe for any michigan wolverine fan but that just about wraps up this breaking news edition of the michigan football report don't worry if you miss anything we're going to loop this baby back we'll have all the details in inside shay patterson's transfer but until then i'm lena bond this is the michigan football insider James Yoder, thanks for tuning in.